This is a 2023 Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek. A new, all-wheel drive only, more off-road friendly trim of the new for last year, fifth generation Nissan Pathfinder. And the Rock Creek is also the fifth trim in the Pathfinder lineup, sitting above the S and the SV, but beneath the SL and the Platinum. This specific Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek is a two-tone paint job with the main color being Scarlet Ember Tint Coat and Super Black up on the roof. This premium two-tone paint is a $790 option. My name is Robin Warner, by the way, an experienced engineer and magazine editor. And my second color is more and more becoming gray. I review all kinds of cars from a $25,000 Ford Maverick to a $425,000 Rolls-Royce Cullinan. I'll happily jump into Honda Accords, BMW M3s, and Porsche 911 GT3s. And I have fun every time. Please subscribe and join me. The base price for a front wheel drive Nissan Pathfinder S is $36,535. The Rock Creek starts at $44,355, and my test car does have the special paint and some all-season weather protectors for the floor mats and for the cargo area, and costs $45,490. By the way, the Nissan Pathfinder Platinum starts at $51,405. With that, now's a good time to pull over and show you around and inside this car in a bit more detail. Just one year after we get an all new generation Nissan Pathfinder, we get a brand new trim to the Nissan Pathfinder, this Rock Creek. It stands out because it is 1.1 inches longer and 2.8 inches taller than other Pathfinders. No doubt this is a distinctive trim. Let me show you what makes the Rock Creek stand out. We have an off-road tuned suspension. That is also 5 eighths of an inch higher off the ground than standard Pathfinders, which is 6 tenths of an inch. While we're here, we have 18 inch wheels with Toyo Open Country All-Terrain Tires. This big and fat tubular roof rack that has a dynamic load of 220 pounds. LED fog lights, standard here. They are also optional on the LED and platinum trims. And of course, several Rock Creek logos. And inside, orange interior stitch work on the doors, on the dash, on the seats, and on the lower center console. And Rock Creek embroidered into the front seats and the lower center console right here. Looking at the front of the car, this is actually the least distinctive part compared to the other Pathfinders. It's got the same basic general shape, these same C-shaped headlights, and this new broad grill that we saw in the 2022 model year Pathfinder, but it definitely has, you know, an aggressive face. It's got this big and bold Nissan logo right here, and then different colors here, the bright red, the polished, the black, the gray, the polished, the black, the polished. There is a lot going on in this front end. It is kind of busy, but it does also give off a pretty consistently rugged look, which is good for the Rock Creek. But anyway, while we're here, why don't we take a quick look under the hood? You are looking at a three and a half liter V6, naturally aspirated, that is transversely mounted in the engine like this. That's right, this is an inherently front wheel drive setup, but as I said, the Rock Creek does come with all wheel drive standard. This is a fairly standard engine layout for modern SUVs but I actually quite respect the simplicity. Naturally aspirated V6, batteries right here, windshield washer fluid is right there. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I like that. Looking at the car in profile, one thing stands out and stands tall right away. That's this big tubular roof mount right here. 220 pounds dynamic loaded capability that's pretty darn high you could definitely set up a roof mounted tent there if you wish i'll go ahead and put the dimensions on the screen so you can check that out and i'll add one extra this is also six tenths of an inch higher off the ground it has a 7.7 .7 inch ground clearance instead of a 7.1 inch ground clearance like the other pathfinders also just so you know i have a lot more information in the description this does also give you a better look at this two-tone paint the red with the black 
and you also have the black side view mirror covers and you know this very more matte black roof rack that goes right here so you do have a lot of like strong contrasting colors here that just add to the general vibe of this thing to just be a little bit more adventurous and more off-roady i think it works you know this is a place where i can work with these black plastic cladded wheel wells on both axles i think it matches these 18 inch wheels nicely and this is a nice strong character line for the rear axle here that just really flares out just ahead of the rear door handle and just goes right into the tail lights yeah i think it's a good looking suv from the profile i already showed you these 18 inch wheels and all-terrain tires but i did want to add that these are also wider than other pathfinder tires most of them are 255 millimeters wide 255s this is a 265 millimeter wide tire and nice and chunky rubber too standard equipment for a rock creek edition pathfinder is the trailer hitch and the harness here and the capability to tow 6,000 pounds that's a nice and high number also you've got a nice and proud rock creek badge right there they're kind of scattered out throughout and as i've showed you before in the standard nissan they are not at all ashamed to let you know it's a pathfinder generally this design is similar to the front contrasting colors you have this nice i think more tastefully sized nissan logo back here and i think it fits the profile nice also one thing i do appreciate no fake exhaust here just one nice single big fat tailpipe under here no nonsense no problems this being a middle trimmed pathfinder this isn't powered or anything you do have a solenoid release but then it manually lifts with these gas struts right here which is no problem Behind the third row, you have 17 cubic feet of cargo room back here. Not a ton, but not bad either. Also, this particular Pathfinder has these all season, all purpose rubber floor mats, and you'll see them throughout the interior of the car. That is a $345 optional extra. We do also have a bit of extra storage underneath the floor here, which is handy. And we also have tie down straps down low and hooks up high to help partition things out or hang lighter equipment and if you don't need to carry seven people you have a lot more cargo space available to you with a couple pulls of a lever i now have 45 cubic feet of storage and room for four and if you still need more cargo space still easy to do and with the second and third row folded, I now have 81 cubic feet of storage and room for two. All right, let's check out the inside. Okay, we have a seven passenger SUV here. This is a three row seven passenger SUV and three of the seats are in this bench back here and I'm sure that they are lovely, but I'm also sure that they are for kids. Look how low the seat bottom is. So I'm not gonna go back there, just trust me. But these people do get cup holders and those three seat belts looks wonderful. But the second row comes standard with captain's chairs, which means I have nice and high seat bottoms, nice amounts of knee room, really good thigh support, and a lot less than 90 degrees of bend in my knees. Also, standard equipment is a three zone climate control system. So here's the third zone right here, as well as a couple of USB ports beneath that. We also have this nice little cubby for a center console here with a couple of cup holders and a deep bin beneath that. And each passenger gets their own armrest to work with. So lovely. Also, I am five foot 11 inches tall or 181 centimeters, and I have plenty of headroom. There's no moonroof in the Rock Creek, which means there's nothing to limit the headroom. So yeah, it's very comfortable. Second row space, quite nice. I could definitely do a road trip back here with little trouble. Of course, most of the space is in the front row and that is just fine. This is the middle of three trims. We do have a power adjusting driver's seat, but the passenger seat is manually adjusted. But the driver's seat does also get lumbar support, which is nice. Pretty typical controls on the door, 
not much else. We do have a couple of adjustments to the left of the steering wheel. This is steering assist right here. And we do have manually adjusting tilt and telescope. It is right there. In the Rock Creek, we have one seven inch screen in the center of two real gauges. Tachometer to the left, speedometer to the right. And then mixed in that are a couple other small gauges, fuel economy, thermostat. That is the case on all Pathfinders except for the Platinum, which gets a fully digital 12.3 inch screen right here. We also have an eight inch center console touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on SL and higher trims. This is a nine inch screen and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is wireless. The steering wheel itself is a pretty nice thick rim. It does have the usual controls on either side. This is the Pro Pilot Assist cruise control right here and some media options over there. We do have paddle shifters for the nine speed automatic transmission. Engine start stop is right here and their springs are three and a half liter V6 to life. And this is what the eight inch screen looks like lit up. Here are the first two of our three zone climate control. And as you can see, we also have heated seats on the Rock Creek. That's nice. Beneath that, we have a cigarette lighter style port right there and a couple of USB ports. This is not a wireless charging pad. This is just a tray. Beneath that, we have a fairly standard looking Prindle, a couple of cup holders. We do have an electric park brake right here and several dry modes. I'll talk about those in just a sec. And underneath that, we have a nice deep bin for storage. Looking up, pretty standard looking rear view mirror right there. Place for glasses and some lights for the roof. And that's about it. Again, no moonroof. Okay, drive modes. As you can see, we have many, many drive modes. They are sand, mud and rut, snow, auto, eco, sport, and tow. This does not have adjustable shock absorbers or anything like that, but with steering and engine and transmission adjustments, there is a fair amount you can do. Oh, and I should mention, speaking of that, you can also manually shift from the Prindle as well D or M and I'll show up there one or D anyway talking about all these different drive modes makes me hungry to do a bit more driving let's get back to the drive all right let's dig into the powertrain there is only one offered in the Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek and that starts with a naturally aspirated three and a half liter V6 it makes 295 horsepower at 6400 rpm and 270 pound-feet of torque at 4800 rpm now that's actually 11 more horsepower and pound feet of torque than the other Pathfinders, 284 and 259. The reason is the Rock Creek is adjusted to accept premium fuel. And with the premium fuel, the engine can advance the timing and other little tricks like that to squeak out a bit more horsepower. It is basically the exact same setup that's in the Infiniti QX60, which also makes the same amount of horsepower and torque same transmission, et cetera, et cetera. But you can run regular fuel in this Pathfinder, no problem. It's just that it will no longer make the higher horsepower numbers. You'll make the same 284 and 259. The only transmission you get is a nine speed automatic transmission. It's the same transmission as the other Pathfinders as well as the Infiniti QX60, and it is a totally reasonable transmission operate smoothly you get good quick and clean shifts yeah no complaints and generally speaking i think this is a good powertrain i like the fact that it's a naturally aspirated larger v6 you get good peak horsepower and good peak torque although it is a little bit higher than modern turbo engines can manage but it's good linear buildup to that power as well. And with the nine speed automatic transmission, you are never far away from either the peak torque or the peak horsepower numbers. So yeah, this is a good, clean, smooth operating powertrain, good engine, good transmission, and all wheel drive system on the roads I've tried at least works fine as well. Now, being a Rock Creek does burden this engine a little bit further especially on the interstate. After all, we do have that big tubular roof rack up high. We also have those all-terrain tires, which are gonna have a slightly higher rolling resistance, and they're a little bit wider. So, fuel economy does suffer as a result. You get 20 miles to the gallon in the city, 23 miles to the gallon on the highway, 21 combined. Depending on how the other Pathfinders are equipped, it goes up to as high as 21 miles to the gallon in the city, 27 on the highway, 23 combined. And while fuel economy is important, 
it's not nearly as much fun as accelerating. Of course I had to test it in this rock creek. Let me show you that now. All right, everybody, time for a quick acceleration test. I do have the Pathfinder Rock Creek in sport driving mode. Let's see how it goes. All right. Coming to a complete stop. Put on the brake. Lift off the brake. No, oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, quick shifts. Good pull, nice acceleration. <laughs> there was that weird little delay there, but then we got a nice kick up and off we went. It did not seem to like the brake torquing too terribly much, but then once we started moving, we started moving quite well. Good acceleration from this powertrain. So how does the Rock Creek ride? How does it feel on the road? Well, that's where some of the modifications to this car have their advantages. First of all, this off-road friendly suspension tune basically means it's a little bit more compliant over bumps and heaves in the road and things like that. Couple that with the 18 inch wheels, we get a little bit more tire sidewall to work with, and that means we have a nice and cushy compliant ride. This Rock Creek rolls over bumps on the road very smoothly, no trouble at all, plenty of compliance, and yes, that does hurt handling a bit. Front end response isn't quite as good, but it's not like front end response is fantastic on the other Pathfinders. It's a larger SUV after all. So yeah, the ride is really good. However, there is another demerit and that is noise. Because of the all-terrain tires and definitely because of that roof rack, this does make a little bit more noise while cruising down the road. There's just more wind to push out of the way and more angles and things for that wind to hit. So you're just gonna have a little bit more noise in this Pathfinder. All of that is true on roads like this or on the interstate. I did test it there as well. Let me show you that. All right, time for a quick stint on the interstate to see how this Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek feels on the open road. Okay, cruise control is set, going 75 miles an hour to keep up with traffic. I do have Pro Pilot Assist on the Rock Creek and I do have it on, which means I can go ahead and take my hands off the wheel. And as you can see, it is making little adjustments here and there. And we do have a subtle curve coming up. And yes, it is following that curve pretty well. But in the middle of the curve, it said, hey, put your hands back on the wheel. As I already mentioned, we do have that big roof rack up top. We do have wider all-terrain tires. That does hurt fuel economy and it does add to the noise that you hear on the interstate. You can definitely hear the presence of that roof rack up there. Cabin isolation is reasonable, but there's only so much you can do when you have a big set of tube steel up top. Road noise too is a little bit louder than you would get from a standard mud and snow all season tire, but it's not a significant difference. The wind noise is definitely the more powerful of the two cabin intrusions that you're getting. On the plus side, the ride is very compliant, very soft and supple, so that part of it's really easy. And engine noise is also good. At 75 miles an hour, we're turning around 1800 RPM, so nice and low RPMs. It's very much a nice rumble in the background, so engine noise is very pleasant. And we're coming up on some slower traffic here, so I also want to show you what the instrument cluster shows us. As you can see, the Nissan sees that there's traffic approaching and it displays that in the center screen in between the two gauges and it's also slowing down for us and it's also turning for us because we're going around another curve as we do this. So I always find it fascinating to see what the car wants to show us in terms of what it sees. Generally speaking, I think if you're interested in something like a Rock Creek, you're gonna be completely fine with the compromises that that brings when it comes to interstate driving. And you'll also enjoy all the space and access to equipment and the three zone climate control and all the USB ports and everything else that comes in this Pathfinder just like every other Pathfinder and find it a totally reasonable highway cruiser. As standard, the Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek can tow up to six thousand pounds. That is a nice and healthy number. The front wheel drive Nissan Pathfinders can tow 3,500 pounds, still an okay number, but obviously a big difference. And the other all wheel drive Pathfinders, if properly equipped, can also tow up to 6,000 pounds. So if you want to tow a nice boat or even a camper with this, you can do that. And that's nice to know. Also, we do have some extra off-roading chops. I told you that we've got six tenths of an inch more ground clearance, still not a lot, still under eight inches, 
but it's more. And that translates to an 18.8 degree angle of approach and a 22.8 degree angle of departure. Your breakover angle is 19.3 degrees. Not mega numbers to be sure, but better than the other pathfinders and it does give you the chance to go a bit off-road. And with that in mind, I did actually find, uh, not exactly an off-roading trail, but I found something that's not a paved road, so I did get a chance to test it out a little bit. Let me show you that. All right, everybody, I was able to find a little off-roady-ish kind of path. It is technically a road, but it is certainly not a presently paved road. So let's see how this Rock Creek handles it. Uh, we have all-wheel drive, so going up this muddy dirt road is no issue at all. It's going over all these bumps and lumps in the road without any trouble. Yeah, I mean, this is easy. This is easy for this Rock Creek. This isn't the sternest off-road test I've ever done, but it's proving very worthy of it as well. Yeah, perfectly reasonable off-roading truck. So, this Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek is a really interesting combination of things. You've got a lot of utility in this, up to 81 cubic feet of storage in back if you just have the two seats up front, and still 45 cubic feet of cargo space, as well as four nice and comfortable captain's chairs. Really, both rows are comfortable. You also do have some nice technology in this car, plenty of USB ports for people, plenty of cup holders for people, those types of things. So it's still very useful for all the day-to-day -day stuff that you need a bigger SUV for. But because of the modifications of this Nissan, you can do a little bit of off-roading. And you get those modifications for a pretty darn reasonable price. A lot of companies are now offering more adventurous versions of their midsize SUVs. I think Nissan did a really good job to price the Pathfinder Rock Creek in a very competitive place. But it's not without compromise. You are getting a little bit more wind noise and you are going to pay a bit more at the pump. So this is definitely for a family, but one that is yearning for a little bit more adventure without breaking the budget. I'm Robin Warner. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you let me and other people know by giving it a thumbs up. Doing so helps me out quite a lot. Also, if you're interested in something like the Rock Creek, you should also definitely check out the also new for 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. That is very similar to this in a myriad of ways. And I actually got a chance to do a little bit of off-roading in that one as well. And from there, I've reviewed a whole bunch of stuff. Something's gonna pop up on the screen next to me. Maybe it's something you're interested in. And if you do watch it, I definitely hope you like it. Okay, goodbye for now.